In this video, I'm going to show you how to declutter your tiny MCE editor. That's the editor that comes core with Joomla. Hey there, Joomla fans. Tim Davis here. I'm a Joomla fan too. And thanks for tuning in to Maintenance Monday number 104 here on the Basic Joomla Tutorials YouTube channel. Thanks for your support of this channel. Thanks for all you regulars that are tuning in. Say hi in chat if you're there. And uh, if you're watching the replay, please subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications. And set your devices to receive those notifications and you'll get updates here on the channel. So we're gonna do a lot of chatting and catching up later on, but let's get right to the meat of the topic right here. Hello, Valerie. Okay, so don't forget to head on over to basicjuma.com forward slash giveaways. Sign up for the Basic Juma newsletter and you'll be entered in every monthly newsletter as long as you confirm your subscription and you're still subscribed. All right, and hello, Ivor. Okay, so uh, this topic was raised by Laura a couple of days ago and she suggested it would be a good one and so I will uh, I'm happy to do it. I'm going to take you to the back end of one of my Joomla sites because it it gives a particular warning that we're I want to mention uh, when we look at this today. Uh, if you're using tiny MCE editor, the editor that comes with Joomla, uh, you'll notice that there's lots of buttons and drop downs and options available to you. And what Laura wanted to do was declutter that. She especially noticed that there's three ways to insert images. And uh, hello, John. And so one of the ways that, uh, 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 so to access, to make these changes, we're going to go to extensions and then plugins. Once you're list, l looking at all the plugins on your site, just type tiny, T-I-N-Y. And you will see there is a, a plugin called Editor Tiny MCE. Now, for those of you that use JCE Editor as I do, you can always do find the settings for JCE Editor by going to Components and then to JC Editor or JC Editor Pro. And then you can go to the Configuration or the Control Panel. But there isn't anything like that for Tiny MCE. And this happens sometimes in Joomla where there are things that you want to change. Uh, they are not uh, accessible through the components menu or you can't find them in modules or the plugin menu. So uh, uh, modules menu. So go to plugins and look. Uh, some plugins when you open them have no settings at all. But here in Tiny MCE, we find lots of settings. Now, uh, you only see this warning once until you save these changes. So I just wanted to, that's what I'm doing on this site. The Tiny MCE Editor plugin has been updated. It, currently, it uses your existing configuration. By editing the plugin, you can now assign and customize various layouts to specific user groups. So, if you're using Tiny MCE, anyone out there call it Tiny Mice? I've always called it Tiny Mice. I think uh, SQL databases are squirrel databases too, by the way. Uh, anyways, if you have some particular setting in Tiny MCE, you probably already know about this area. Uh, but just keep in mind that if uh, you're going to make changes after it's updated, you might change or break something that you had set up before. So uh, here we can scroll down and we'll see that uh, here's all the buttons, the whole shebang that you see. And I think this is what Laura was commenting about. Now check this out. Over here we have use simple preset, use medium preset, and use advanced preset and clear. There are some presets that you can have and make available to people using your site. So for instance, this set is assigned to public. Uh, if you had a form or some extension that was available to anybody who visited to submit a comment, this, these are all the buttons they would say you would, they would see. If you don't want them to see all that stuff, you could just clear it. And there is nothing to be seen. Oh, sorry, let's go back here. This is what they're seeing here. This is all of your options. Sorry, a little confused looking at the screen there. Uh, if you want, you can check on set two and you have this default amount here or if you want you can have set zero which looks like it is the whole shebang as we said before now notice down here these sets are assigned to different groups and you could always assign them to other groups as well so that's what I was saying before here set two very plain bold underline strike through undo redo bullet list and paste this text that's all that's available on the site to anyone using a form who's not logged in now, here's the cool thing. Let's say that you have in the back end of your editor set zero. It's assigned to administrators, but as uh, Valerie pointed out, you know that underneath insert, it says uh, insert image and a bunch of options. 
And then you also have blah, 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 over here an insert edit image button. And you also have, blah, 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 there's one other somewhere else hiding. Uh, where are you? Do, 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 do. Let's just go right into the. Uh... Oh, did I say Valerie? Yes, yeah, sorry, Laura. Yes, and I, th I said Laura at the beginning. Yeah, and I, you guys are both in Toronto, so I have to keep you separate inside my mind. <laughs> yes, yeah, so um, anyways, uh, where else? There is another image button in here. We saw that one. We can do it through insert and edit, and boy, I don't see it right now. But look at what you can do. If you do not want this insert edit button, insert edit image button, you can left click on it, you can drag it up and it disappears. So you can actually come up with a custom level for you to, uh, to you can customize these levels, these availabilities in, J in Tiny MCE Editor, and then uh, get exactly seeing just what you want. So if you're an administrator and there's tons of things up here that you don't use, so for instance, um, you've got find and replace you might keep that maybe you don't ever use the indent thing and you think oh, i don't use this so just get rid of it. just drag it up there and the, you will eventually get here's another one full screen you never use full screen who needs the button there uh special characters now special character you can add with this button there's also an insert and special character option the drop downs don't work in this in this editing area or the setup area um but basically that's how you go about changing the um, buttons and the layout for JCE Editor. I'll just show you. If you don't want to see insert, just drag that whole thing away. In fact, you might want to go to set one. Let's see, how do we go back to set? No, set zero. You can just drag all of those things away. Now remember, if you're gonna save this and you have something there previously, um, just remember uh, once you save it, that's the, it's going to change your other settings and perhaps for all your settings that's what that warning is about probably all right so there you go if you find that tiny mce is cluttered let's see if chat gonna come up there if you find that tiny mce is cluttered when you're working on your juma site that's how to find it. go to plugins search for tiny and go in and then start to play around and there's lots of other settings that are in there maybe we'll visit them another time but for now, that's the topic for today, how to declutter your tiny MCE editor. Head on in and switch that around, and uh, you'll have a lot less clutter there. Also, we saw how you can add buttons for other groups as well. So we're going to hang out and chat now and catch up. But for those of you, that, that's why you came. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel, and uh, you'll get updates of new things that are happening. Uh, including watch me work live streams that happen on Wednesdays. So uh, if you're leaving now, thanks again. Enjoy your Joomla sites and God bless. And thank you, Laura, for a great suggestion. I actually had to Google this, how to find it, because I thought, how on earth you get in there? And it makes perfect sense to go into the plugins. And um, yeah, so that was good. And so how is everybody doing? What's your day like? How was your weekend? Uh, let's just take a peek around in here at Tiny MCE Editor again. I'm going to get that warning again because I didn't save it. Uh, there's, uh, I didn't realize that there were so many options to Tiny MCE now. Um, you can set the images directory that, that's going to be the root. Um, and you can obviously do that for different groups. Um, I, it looks, uh, da, da, uh, there are three sets. I wondered if you could make a new set. Now, I also did a little bit of searching around to see how you can add things to um, the drop down, but I didn't figure that out yet. Uh, other things, uh, automatic language, language selection, language code, text direction, all kinds of things. I was really surprised to find uh, this stuff in here and advanced image dialogue word count that you can show all yeah so uh, and of course part of that is because uh, I use JCE editor as many of as you do um, I think it's a little bit easier on the eyes uh, and uh, but I've always had all these years that tiny MCE was just not practical and didn't have a lot of features
Um, yeah, which do I like? Do I like JCE Editor or, or um, Tiny MCE Valerie S? I like JCE Editor. Um, why? Um, I'll do it quick, and then maybe that's what we'll do for Watch Me Work live stream on Wednesday. Tiny MCE Editor versus JCE. And why I like it. That's, that's a great question. And uh, I'm always looking for good things to go on and on about. Uh, but but real quick right now, I like JCE Editor because uh, the buttons are in color. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm going to open up an article here. And I need to show you my screen here, right? Screen computer. I like JCE Editor because it's those content articles. The buttons are in color. And I use the Pro so version of JCE Editor. Here we go. It's opening up. Uh, so I like the buttons. They're a little easier on the eye. Um, you can make lots of different profiles, which I don't see. But to be fair, before Wednesday, I'm going to have to do some comparison. Uh, Mary says JCE is easier to add links and images. Yes. Uh, I think so, too. Um, uh, let me just, I'm just back here in JC, in tiny MCE. Uh, I don't see a place. Let's see advanced. Oh, number of sets. Okay. Uh, and Mary uses to do different profiles and that's just what I was looking at. You know, I was just saying, I wonder how can I make more than one set? Cause there's only three here, but look at it. We're checking advanced. I think if I go number of sets, we go six. And uh, I'm going to save this, uh, get rid of the error, uh, the warning. And now I actually have uh, sets. Now it would be great to be able to um, rename these, but obviously each set, the default was the minimum. So the same as set two, but here's what you could do. Uh, and this is very, uh, this is something that I like JCE editor for set five let's say we can assign it to a group now i have some different uh, let's say walter mclaren uh, uh, there's a group um now i can make a set of buttons for walter mclaren only and you can do this in jce editor uh i don't know how long you'd be able to do this in tiny mc because i'm actually just learning this and surprised right now but uh that that you can uh, so for the longest time, I have not been doing anything with it. So, but yeah, I like that in JCE editor. And also, um, now I'll tell you one thing I do like about, um, let's see here. I was just going to look and see here. Uh -huh. See, uh, now this is JCE Editor. Down at the bottom, we have these buttons, Module, Snippet, Menu, Content, Template, Templater, Rockbox. These are buttons that get added afterwards. I did see on a on a site somewhere using Tiny MCE that those buttons were actually appearing up in the top row, which I did like, but I don't know if I have removed them or why that's not happening. So something to look at. So I guess to be fair, I'm going to have to compare those two in before Wednesday. But uh, I do like JCE Editor. Uh, I've used it for a long time, and I think those options were available long before they were in Tiny MCE, or at least it wasn't really evident. Now it may be because it was so hard to find. It's not, and you know, of course, I've come from as, as it, most people come from zero in using and using Joomla. So uh, maybe a long time ago. There were these options, but I install a site and then I found JCE Editor. And it was so much easier to figure out and access, not knowing that these things were in the back. Uh, so that might speak too to how some uh, developers uh, promote their stuff. Uh, even even something signing in now, starting up in Joomla, maybe maybe something saying, "Hey, you can edit your tiny MCE editor by going to this area." Who knows? Maybe someone will wonder how to do it and end up Googling this thanks to uh, Laura asking that question. So yeah, that's why I like Tiny, uh, that's why I like JCE and we'll, um, that we'll talk about that on Wednesday. That'll be a great topic. So those are a couple of things right there. Okay, good idea. Thank you, 
Thank you for that, Valerie. Valerie to the rescue for a topic. Okay, so uh, perhaps it was. Let's try this here. Let's get out of this one here and go to Basic Joomla. And we'll log into the back in the Basic Joomla site. Let me get out of my plugins here. We'll log in. And I'm going to go to System, Global Configuration. And I'm going to go to System tab. Nope. Um, I'm going to go to Site. Okay, Default Editor, Tiny MCE. I still have that. Great. I'm going to go open up a new article and say new let's see maybe this is where i saw it yes that's what it's talking about there's all the extra buttons code article dummy content peter's video camera these are things uh, extra buttons have been set up for different extensions here's engage box um, um, add a module this is uh, conditional content that's a regular labs one and all those buttons hand are handy dandy up here now so that's a plus because you don't have to scroll way down to get to the bottom and uh, we just have toggle editor down there however let's save and close this and go to extensions plugins open a new tab and to do, do, do search for tiny do do, do. And we'll go in there. Now, I have to read carefully in here to see why those buttons just show up there, but perhaps are not showing uh, why they show up on the other screen, but are not like are showing up in the actual editor but did not show up here is something that I can move and organize uh, probably maybe some custom plugin or oh, add custom plugins custom button add custom buttons okay perhaps something there yes all right uh, well, that's interesting something to uh, something to look into Images directory that I have already looked at that text direction advance no to do, do, do images I don't see advanced list no yeah so I don't see how to manage that which would be very interesting we could just try this right now how would I how would I do this do I have a contact? I, I'm wondering if these buttons show up in the front end editor. How I would do that right now, I'm not sure. Let's see. So why don't we close this and let's go back here. Components, RS forms. Okay, I need to change screens just because uh, I don't want to accidentally show any email addresses that someone submitted a contact. I don't know if that would happen, but we will see. Let me just check here. RS Forms, Pro, Manage Forms. Um, oh, I don't have any forms set up on this page. That's why I do have uh, 38 submissions through this registration form. Did I adopt this as a contact form? I did. All right, so you guys can see this. Uh, so I will change. I'm going to add a text area to this form. And let's see. Enable editor, yes. And that's great. Columns, I'm going to let's put 100 columns in there just so it's wider. Let's do uh 25 rows and so now what's placeholder no i won't do that right now show editor buttons okay enabling this option will display the editor xtd plugin buttons below the editor okay additional attributes all right so let's save this 
I'll name a field uh, text box. Um, this is a test and it's published validation. Okay, so we're gonna go save. And now our form is down at the bottom. Oh, it's not very, not very wide. Let's do some more. Let's do some more width there. Let's do 500 columns. What is it? How big is a column? I wonder. Is it a pixel? Uh, well, at least we can drag the size here. All right, we'll do that. We will. Uh, da -da -da -da. We will save. Go to the front end of the site. RS Forms Pro is one that I have used for a long time. I bought the Pro version. Oh man, I'd have to check, but easily 10 years ago, if not more, I think it's got to be more than that. And then all of a sudden they made it pro forever uh, for people that had that. I don't know if it is now, but um, okay. So I do not have a contact form here. So let's go back to, um, oh, we're going to do that. Let's go here, menu, go main menu. We'll go new and we're going to do an R, uh, we'll just go contact. We're going to do a uh, menu type of RS form pro and we'll pick a form and we know it's the third one pro registration form. I just, I just used one of the existing ones, I guess. And we will save that. The cache is cleaned. And so let's move this way over to here. We'll refresh. There's contact showing up. Let's click that. All right, so the formatting is a little bit wonky here. And I really don't have any icons there. Interesting. I wonder what the deal is there. Okay, so, but there are no, okay, so we have a little square down at the bottom. Uh -huh, it was there. Let me refresh here. Yeah, that's not working very great, is it either? Let's do a deep, oh, we're uh, system. Let's go clear the expired cache I think this has to with cache cleaner but I'm just going to uh, do that now we'll refresh the contact here and see all right well so that's not quite working now if you look squinty eyed down here when I mouse over this corner that square is the broken image for dragging this to a different size uh, we have no square images down here that represent any of those other buttons at the bottom. We do have the option to insert things here or do a bullet list. And we can mouse over and see what these are. But uh, remember, I'm right now just looking because I'm curious to see if those extra buttons from other... Um, um, from other extensions and plugins show up in the front. So why don't we go back here? We can close this menu item. Extensions, plugins. And we just go to plugins. Don't need a new tab for that. We'll go tiny. So uh, something that has me thinking then is that uh, where we go down here and face this option of. Um, uh, advanced custom no um, let's read it again here text direction to the URLs new lines text filter prohibit elements resizing hornet element the word advanced image advanced list turn on off to enable set number formats and bullet types not that boy we're just looking at that uh, extended somewhere oh that was in the form text box we go edit 
Okay. And the attributes, do we show the editor buttons? Oh, when I said no. Do, do, do. Enabling this option will display the editor XTD buttons below the editor. Well, let's see what that does. Go back here and refresh. Okay, there's the only two that were uh, put in there that were, and it's not showing them below the editor, it's actually just showing the extra ones there. Font Awesome 5, I am fine with, except it says something went wrong. Oh, you're not authorized to view this resource. Hopefully, we get that with Engage Box as well. Oh, you do get it with Engage Box. Button type label. And we don't want people using Engage Box. So, in this case, uh, it's not working too great there. So, let's see. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. I want to do one other thing here. I want to go to um, extensions and plugins. Open up a different tab here. And I'm going to search and the type will be editors XTD. And I'm going to take out tiny out of that filter. Here's all the buttons that you can have. Now, we saw that um, engage box was opening up, what is available. So let's click on this. I wonder if there's permissions in here. No, there is not. All right. So that's interesting, the engage box button. But XTD must stand for these extra, for extra buttons. Because here we have regular lab sourcer, articles anywhere, dummy content, blah, 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 blah. And then here's button article, which I've already turned off in there. Oh, that's why I couldn't, uh, sorry, button image. That's why I couldn't see that maybe on the other site because maybe I had it unpublished. Uh, also, button page break at the bottom and read more all right so um what we see here is that's not working great in rs forms so i'm gonna hey i'm gonna try this system global configuration and i'm going to change the default editor to jce and now let's refresh here Now I get those buttons at the bottom, but JCE editor is not showing up here in the front. And that is interesting. I wonder if I don't have an editor published for the front version. This is a much deeper dive than I thought I was going to be doing. Uh, but let's figure it out here. J events, JCE editor pro. Let's go into here. Editor profiles. Do I even have one for? Oh, I have not published the front end profile. I turn that off. So let's publish that. Uh, yeah, the cache cleaned. Refresh. Nope. Ah, ah, ah. Well, some things to uh, to look at and try to figure out. So this is not Watch Me Work live stream. So don't want to spend too much time on this today because that's not what you guys tuned in for. How many days a week do you want to watch me struggle with stuff? Um, Naval was the big editor. Say no. Let's see. What's the? Okay. No. Do 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 Okay, one more try here. It's a really ugly form too, eh? Eh? Hey. Uh, of course, I've got it all out of order as well here. So, probably, you know, one thing that I can do to change this form is go to the form properties and I can make this what will I do? Maybe I'll try. 
Bootstrap 3. Just for fun while we're here. And refresh. There you go. We got something that's a little bit nicer, but I still don't have anything in this re in this uh, form here. So let's go back to menus and main menu. And I'm going to unpublish that contact. And we'll fight that battle another day. Maybe Wednesday we'll fight it. It takes some Googling. Some Googling to find out why RS Pro, RS Forms does not, uh, JC Editor not showing in RS Forms. I'm sure there'll be something. All right. Well, let's uh, zip over to the extensions Facebook page. And what is being posted? Do, do, do. August 23rd. Someone looking for Joomla developers? PM. Your price per hour rate and some of the best works you have done. Thank you. All right. So, uh, interestingly, 30 US. This person charges an hour. This person charges. Duh, 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 duh. Some, I think, somewhere down there, we someone actually had ten dollars an hour. Oh, that's oh, there you go, ten US dollars per hour. So that's a pretty low price. Uh, I'm not sure what is minimum wage in the U.S. Minimum wage in the U.S. for what is it for serves pretty low, I think. Um. Anyways, so some of these, uh, you know, it's just for commentary. Uh, uh, you know, last week on Watch Me Work, um, let me change this here. Uh, on Watch Me Work, we read through that article of how to set up uh, web maintenance contracts. Contracts, at web maintenance and something contracts. And uh, one of the things that, to points that was made to, towards the end of that article was to... Um, was that don't let the price of other freelancers impact um, or, uh, what you see in your value because your business is different. So certainly um, there are places in the world where uh, people are charging $10 US an hour to work on sites and they're making a handsome living or at least a much better living than what they would have the availability to do elsewhere in the country. Good, good for them. Um, and so there's some places on the internet where, uh, if your rates are higher or something that is, uh, what you can get in Europe or in the States or sorry, in the Western country, uh, Europe or North America, uh, and, uh, Australia, other parts of the world, then, uh, sometimes some of these forums are not places where you are going to get a lot of work, uh, particularly when people are charging ten dollars an hour and I'm not knocking for charging for charging ten dollars an hour uh, because uh, it's great that they can be making a living in their particular economy and uh, where they are so they're providing for their family and I'm not gonna knock anybody for doing that so in in a global economy that's I guess what keeps things all bounced out now having said that um, I have always thought about running an advertising campaign saying that I'll fix the website that your hairdresser's nephew built for you. So, but I'm sure, you know, just because people are charging $10 an hour does not mean that they don't do good work. Um, uh, federal min minimum wage is seven twenty-five per hour, but there is a state minimum wage. And Vinny says you get what you pay for it. Yes. Although um, you could, someone could be super good and learning business and not charging what their value is, or they could be trying to build up a good um, resume on Fiverr or Upworthy by getting work and uh, uh, who knows. But yes, some people that uh, don't, uh, yeah, certainly from the perspective of support, uh, if someone is undercutting themselves, they're, uh, they're maybe uh, have to hustle to really keep money coming in. But if you're living, listen, I know people, I have, I have friends in countries where they would love to make $5 a day. Uh, in fact, I'm hoping to be able to get them to do some work 
Uh, now, interesting uh, to find some work for them. Now, interestingly, I do not want to take advantage of brown people. And I think that that's what a lot of people do when they uh, are hiring overseas. Why pay someone in North America when you can't get it done cheaper? And uh, so I, you know, I never want to say, hey, that, that guy will take money because he's desperate. So I won't pay him what he's worth. Um, having said that, um, there are people in countries that actually cannot make a lot of money or else they will draw attention to themselves. Um, my, as I've mentioned before, my wife and I are working with refugees and persecuted Christians. And there are countries where uh, their populations uh, of people, because of their beliefs, um, because of their heritage, because of, uh, because they because they're from one uh, one tribe and not the other tribe. If they start to prosper, it draws attention for the people that are persecuting them. And so therefore, uh, they do not want fancy cars uh, because they will be killed if they reach the point of having fancy cars. But also in those places, they don't have a lot of money. Uh, they don't have a lot of opportunity either because they're looked down on. Uh, so for instance, in the country of Pakistan, uh, Christians, many of them in some parts of the world, the best job they can get is sweeping streets or uh, cleaning out cesspools or um, working, making bricks for like like almost slave labor. Um, so yeah, so if someone is able, has the skills and is able to make $10 an hour just to provide for their family and help and just, and uh, that's, uh, that's another context. Valerie says it's an interesting topic. She says she's starting to question the wisdom, that wisdom, oh, Vinny, that what you, you get what you pay for. Been watching YouTubers for several months espouse hyperinflated rates. Uh, and she's, uh, Valerie says she finds the dialogue offensive. And there's a happy medium. Yes. Now, uh, 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 I've, I've had to... Uh, I knew, I knew a guy back in Toronto whose company processed all of the steel in the roof of the Sky Dome. Uh, he had, a, he had a, a steel processing plant, so they didn't melt it, but they bent it and they made it into things, uh, had rail siding, uh, and, and he was very successful. And uh, so he attended a church that we went to, uh, that where I was associate pastor, and I always, I always wondered how how what it would be like what it's like to have a lot of money and to have a lot of needs around you and uh instead of judging uh because there's certain like i had no idea what he was doing for charity you know he may have been putting a lot of his money into other things um but uh i think there's probably a challenge that comes with that I mean, on one range, you have rich people that are just super greedy and don't care. And I think that that's, you know, when we see uh, when we see a lot of things that are happening in the world and all the money is just going to, you know, like, you know use the term, the 1%, uh, that's, that's gross. But as we move further down the line, um, you know, we tend to be a little bit easier on ourselves. And some of us have a lifestyle that uh, is beyond what we need and could actually help out others so um yeah now the whole uh the whole thing of just getting more and more and more and getting astronomical rates yeah that can be pretty uh like you said pretty gross the uh and i think i think uh valerie there is a happy medium uh the medium where's the happy medium i think it moves around and I think there's some people that have a lot of money. They find a happy medium as well. For instance, uh, Warren Buffett had, I think, $44 billion. And uh, I, I probably have the numbers wrong here, but he gave like $40 billion of it to uh, the Gates Foundation to manage. But he still kept $4 billion. Uh, that was his happy medium. Uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, so I don't. Uh, on one hand, I think it's really good not to judge other people uh, because... Um, uh, you know, we have stuff maybe with fewer zeros to deal with in our own lives, but, um, yeah, certainly, certainly if we want to make a high amount of money because we feel like we're important and are, we matter, then that's, that's nuts. 
Um, if we want to make a high amount of money because we want to retire and do humanitarian stuff, uh, that maybe makes a bit of a difference. The other thing too is that uh, on the whole scale of people, uh, what clients will pay, there are people that only have a hundred bucks and would be happy for 10 hours of work on their site. But there's also people who are uh, have large companies and large budgets who want the best and are willing to pay for it and will just go looking and find someone. Uh, they're less likely to go on Fiverr and decide that they're going to hand over the whole fate of their website and SEO for 25 bucks, whereas they might seek out someone who's got quite a track record and resume of things and is involved and has shown proven success and but that person is asking for more money there's also supply and demand too let's say um let's say that uh you're making 50 dollars an hour and you have 10 clients and they are just clamoring for you to do stuff and that's great you can manage that and then someone finds out that you're doing a great job and comes along and says uh hey um i would like I would like you to work for me too and I would like this done right away. Are you going to say uh, no because I can't take on more? Or are you going to say well I'd be happy to handle that but I'm going to charge more because my because your time is more valuable which you could then turn around and perhaps use increased money and provide a job for someone who hasn't figured out how to build their business and so you would charge more so that you can take on more work but keep the other going it's all um yeah it's all relative all that. now look uh i think what's key i think what is key would be key for us all to have in an understanding in our life is to care for people who are poor now sometimes people will say oh yeah the poor they just want a free ride there's plenty of people who are legitimately poor that we can find to help in this world. If you look at someone, you see they're just taking advantage of, uh, of, of the kindness of others. So for instance, uh, I remember dropping off, I remember hearing a story about people dropping off turkeys at Christmas time through a, a program to help families that were struggling and the family didn't want to get off the couch. And when something said, oh yeah, just drop the groceries over there with the others, they were just collecting. So, all right, so you see that? Maybe that person is not, uh, there is not uh, deserving of getting work, uh, getting work, uh, of getting that handout. But there's plenty of people, plenty of people in communities uh, like First Nations whose uh, cultures have been gutted by, up here in Canada, the residential school system where uh, children were taken from, uh, taken from their families put in school and uh, for those that ended up getting educated that's the best hope that they uh, I mean that's the best that could turn out for that horrible situation but a lot were uh, abused verbally and sexually and then uh, that was a failed experiment in doing something that shouldn't have been done anyways trying to uh, kill their culture and now they are you know they have this generational brokenness Ah, you know what there's something that uh, could be helped. People overseas, there's lots. So, um, I think if we have, I think it's important for us to have a healthy and proper understanding that of others and their needs, so that we can work for what we need, and then we can also help others who are struggling, because there are plenty. And uh, and of course, that uh, subjective area is what do we need. So we have to sort that out for ourselves and be true and honest in our response. Uh, been lots of chat here going here. Let me catch up. Uh, da, 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 da. Da, da, da. Okay, uh, Vinny says uh, to Valerie, uh, you charge what you're worth, and if you don't want to pay it, then you're not my client. And he spends a lot of time fixing the work from bargain prices. Hooray for fixing work from bargain prices. Uh, yeah, and... No, I'm sure, Vinny, not attacking you. I'm referring to people aiming to charge $700 an hour. No joke. And I am loath to provide further free advertising. Ari, who these guys are. <laughs> uh, so Vinny posted a link here. Uh, let's see this. He says, once he heard this story, he learned not to worry about what to charge. All right, I'm going to click on that. 
you've already pasted the link. Why don't we just, you know, I know you guys can read. <laughs> I'm pretty sure most of you can read. But let's, uh, and if anyone wants to talk, you know, we're having a conversation about this, I can fire up Zoom if you guys want to uh, talk. Uh, let's see. Okay, I changed to the proper screen there. Great. I'm uh, just going to check what's happening here on the stream. Everything is going fine. All right, and I need to change my glasses. Okay, uh, the Boilermaker. Oh, yes, I know. I remember the story. I think I've heard about it. Uh, I think there's a variation of it about uh, Ford coming in to fix a factory or something, but I uh, uh, heard an old, old story recently that reemphasizes the importance of intuition, creativity, and know-how. Um, the intent of this story is to show that know-how is more important than a title. You can have a hundred titles, but you must be able to apply what you know. There's an old story of a boiler maker who was hired to fix a huge steamship boiler system that was not working well. After listening to the engineer's description of the problems and asking a few questions, he went to the boiler room. He looked at the maze of twisting pipes, listened to the thump of the boiler and the hiss of the escaping steam for a few minutes, felt some pipes with his hands, then he hummed softly to himself reached into his overalls and took out a small hammer and tapped a bright red valve one time. Immediately, the entire system began working perfectly and the boilermaker went home. When the steamship owner received a bill for $1,000, and that would be a good bill because it's a steamship. An old story. He became outraged and complained that the boilermaker had only been in the engine room for 15 minutes and requested an itemized bill. So the boilermaker sent him a bill that read as follows. For tapping the valve, 50 cents. For knowing where to tap, $999.50, total $1,000. At the end of the day, education will most likely help you to find a job while education combined with insight times creativity uh, will enable you to define your future. Lots of folks can do tap the valve, very few precisely where to tap and why. Be that tapper. Yeah, that's a great, uh, great story. I think... Uh, um, yeah, I, I remember hearing a variation of it, but it is true. Uh, and practically too. Now let's, all right. So we live in, we live, uh, in a Western co country. I think most of us live in Western cultures, uh, that are, that are watching this. Uh, so cost of living is high because life is crazy all around. I live in the third most expensive real estate city in Canada. Prices are high. Uh, and, um, so if you know where to tap and you know precisely where and why, and you can do something quickly that used to took you a long time or would take someone else a longer time. Let's say someone was going to take a thousand dollars worth of time using this example. Um, and, uh, and you can do it in just a couple of minutes, but that's the value of the job. Uh, if you just keep doing, if you say, well, that only took me 15 minutes, I'll charge you 50 cents. Uh, it's pretty hard to have a living doing, uh, making, you know, just doing things quickly for 50 cents. And uh, unless, of course, you're working for 50 cents. And then he probably pays more than that. Uh, so the, um, yeah, so it really comes down to billing by timing, by your time, or by the value of the job that you're doing. And uh, I thought last week uh, in that uh, was really interesting uh, in the um, article that we looked at a uh, way to calculate what do you what do you need to make what do you want to make what's your yearly salary and um, yeah uh, like Valerie said aiming to charge seven hundred dollars per hour that's pretty good work if you can get it there's not a lot of work like that and uh, yeah I like what and now Frank Kern he's a super duper rich guy and uh, but I like uh, what he talks about in consultant in consulting. And that's a guy that has someone pay ten. They'll pay ten thousand dollars to go to his house for lunch or something like that and talk with him, or for an afternoon seminar. But uh, he basically said, "How about helping people by helping them?" And he talked about like douchebaggery, which was when you know you, we've seen those commercials where someone comes on and says, "Oh hi there, friend. Thanks for dropping by. Just let me close the door of my Lamborghini and let's walk around my Porsche. Come on into my house and see it, and then we'll sit down and talk. And there's my pool, and there's a da 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 da." 
that's I find that kind of gross now but you know that's the way that uh, that's the way that people are selling and there are people that are just greedy to have that lifestyle and are in a hurry I think to find out that it's uh, not everything that they think that it's going to be so yes uh, I don't want to be so subjective by saying we should just be true to ourselves because I think we need something external to ourselves to anchor to to have as a standard to aim for um, and we have to be wise in how we choose that and um, but uh, there has to be a core of you we have to be human beings uh, we're beings not do we're not we're human beings not human doers and um, that means that uh, even though the work that we do whoops 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 that was the wrong screen and we go to there i think that's makes it comes okay um yeah we're we are human beings not human doers and so what we do should contribute to who we are being and part of being is our connection to other people uh, in the world around us immediately our family uh our community but also uh being citizens of the world as well Ivor says he bills one hour about 90 US for upgrading Joomla and the most extensions that you do and the most extensions I do this very fast usually but sometimes I stumble on some errors yes Ivor that's uh, you're, you're charging 90 US I am putting together packages I'm going to do the $99 and that's Canadian um, Dr. Wayne Dwyer talks about being human beings not doers yes okay uh, and Ivor, your point there is good because sometimes you do it very fast, but other times there are uh, issues that will come up, and we have uh, and we talked about that last week, last Wednesday as well, um, balancing things out. Uh, Valerie says one of the guys behind New Shoe, Tim, you should you showed his website in the last WW and didn't say why. It's lately all over YouTube. Has several products, course, CMS software, ads on YouTube. Call a, a collaborate with the future. Uh, Valerie, was that the one where I mentioned? Uh, was he interviewing the twelve-year-old? Uh, that's probably why I mentioned it. I, I I did share a video with the podcast, and I don't know who it was, but it was um, podcast. He was interviewing a twelve-year-old who had turned down thirty million dollars on Shark Tank for seventy percent of her company, and I said, "Watch this, kind of interesting, but also will be maddening." Um, well, okay, so, uh, be, yeah, so Ivor, yeah, I definitely, I, you know, I think the other thing too, part of being human is listening to our conscience. Now, some people have really burned their conscience really well. Let me just center this picture here a little bit. I really like, I still have to work on the glare from this one camera here, but, uh, the, um, uh curtains are working for me uh so we some people burn off their conscience or they ignore it or they become desensitized to it but let's see if you're going to charge something and in your mind you think no that's not fair that's not a right value then and you say well i'm, I'm doing it anyways because i just want money then there's there's something that happens i think inside of our souls that uh that is you know we are running counter we're being different how we were created to be and um now sometimes we think oh that's not fair because you know, we're learning about business i've been very open about learning about being self-employed the last couple of years and uh you know as i see what i want to accomplish and i see what other people around me are doing and building their business and as I consider retirement or wanting to provide for my family if something if for my wife if something should happen to me I realize oh I have to I have to I have to I have to turn the volume up a bit on this business and so therefore I'm running a business and then you start to learn about overhead and you and the cost of software each year and uh, maybe I'm gonna have to replace my computer who knows or things are advancing so you start to have a, a new appreciation and you realize oh there is value in what I'm charging. I, I'm not talking about just the, the learning part. I'm talking about 
oh, this would be that would be unfair to be ripping that person off, but I'm going to do it anyways. I think we diminish our enjoyment of being because we add uh, the, the weight of guilt and self-recrimination of our conscience guiding us, and that's no way to live. Uh, it's clear that we live in a fallen world. Uh, we live in a world where uh, we all make choices that are selfish and that hurt others. Um, and so I think, uh, I think when it comes to our business and what we're charging, we need to look for something that is fair, that is good, and, and just keep growing in our understanding of business. But again, remember, we don't want to lose ourselves in the process of gaining things in this world. Um, da, da, da. Oh, that, oh yes, okay. Um, oh yeah, okay, I remember that, uh, Valerie. That was just, that, that was out of that article, what the website costs you, punched in 15 hours. Um, John Moholt, Moholt asks, and I'm gonna look at that up, Valerie. Uh, anyone done pay what you want can you just read an interesting article about a photographer that did that for promotion and he did actually end up making more per hour than his basic fee cool uh now it's interesting so he did that as a promotion and uh, tapping appreciation and personal ethics cool that's a, that would no i've never tried that um now yeah how would that work uh let's see who would you would you would make a you would say do you know where that article is john that'd be great that'd be something fun to look at valerie uh let's see here let me uh do, 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 do. all right why don't we just do this here i'm going to change to full screen all right but not me in the bottom here okay so let's go to YouTube. Let's go to... Now why does this say assign template to article hack? Oh, I bet you I did not change the title for this. Wah, wah, wah. That's something I forgot to do last night. Okay, well I will change that before that goes published. But we want to see last week's. Let's go to my channel. And let's go down to this one here. That's last week. So let's click to see that. Let's pause. Nice shirt, Tim. Uh, da, 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 advanced template manager. Da, da, da. Let's see what. Oh, that's, that was, uh, yeah, maintenance. No, not maintenance Monday. We want it just a live stream. This one here. Just All right, I'm going to pause there. Uh, and we're going to go down and see this. Oh, the new school project. I think this is it here. Oops. That's because I'm, oh, no, 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 no getting out of control here all right let's pause that <laughs> um, let's go to do, 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 do. there we go yeah so I want to leave this YouTube okay John I see that link uh, was this it here, Valerie? How much should I charge? New school? This is actually a link that was inside that article. Um, I did not realize uh, that it was... Oh, the, the designer's pricing class. I never scrolled down and looked farther down. I just looked at it as kind of a, uh, a, kind of a thing. Learn to word, build websites profitably. Rand Siegel, teachable.com. Okay, I'll watch that. In the meantime, I'm going to click on this link. And. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, and I never followed it. Uh, okay, so it's the uh, you had no problem with the blog post. It's one of the th- it's one of the three guys ran s. Okay, I did not follow through. I just kind of had a look at that. I think the you know I was surprised because the number that I put the number that came out of that last week when I was um, oh look at that you guys can see past the curtain there. <laughs> How did I fix that? I don't think that opens anymore. Uh, blah, 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 blah. There we go. I think that one of the, I think that just the fun numbers that I put in came out reasonable. But All right. So that's John Moholt's page here. I let my clients pay what they wanted and the results amazed me. Uh, let's have a look at this. Okay. So my business is about 90% dealing with individuals and about 10% working with brands. I just moved into a new live work studio and, and to help break it in i decided to have hold a pay what you can sale and the results made me change my entire business model for the first week of the sale i limited myself to one shoot per day to try and keep things under control however all of the slots filled up extremely quickly and i decided to open up an extra seven slots for the last week asking people to pay what they want for a photo shoot leaves a lot of doors open to abuse and being taken advantage of so i sure to keep my bases covered with some fine print in order to make sure I didn't take a headshot and suddenly see it on a realtor's board or take a photo of a model and see it in a campaign, I had a clause in my original Facebook post that images could not be used for commercial purposes. That said, I photograph a lot of the people that are part of the LGBTQ uh, I2S plus community. Man, we're gonna, they're going to take over all of the letters, including drag queens, kings, gender performers. So I added a clause that gig posters received and a pass since a lot of these people might get 50 to or $100 a show. So charging them licensing is not my best interest as a business. Making it seem like a favor to them also helped them push the sale even more. I'm including the actual post I made in case you decide something similar. So he's got this pay what you can for portraits, value 250 Canadian. Moving is expensive, terrifyingly so. I'm moving to a brand new uh, live work studio this month. So in order to cover costs, I'm doing an experiment, a pay what you can sale interesting okay are you super broke and need a headshot for your acting resume i got you covered don't worry about it uh da, 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 da. are you super duper mega rich but also stingy that's fine too from zero to ten thousand dollars you can pay what you can for a session with me and the fine print not images may not be used for commercial purposes if you'd like photo shot on film you must pay 40 a roll one setup to cover film da, 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 da. sessions are up to an hour long or three setups Said your proofs, you can choose these photos. Uh, okay, so he's got some details in there. Uh, as you can see within the post, I tried to explain everything as succinct as possible, explaining the whole process and the why of it as plainly as possible. I also include a small sentence that sums up the whole post. One of the rules for the promotion is that if someone wants to take advantage, they absolutely must share the post. This is to try and force the post to get more eyeballs, and by my calculations, it worked. Facebook loves images, so I was sure to put a uh, together simple easy to share image all right marketing myself when it came to advertising I did a few things along with making the photo above I spent about $75 on advertising out of the 16 or so people that came through my studio a grand total of one person had seen the sponsored post that said spending a few dollars on Facebook advertising does seem to tell the almighty algorithm to give it more attention than a regular post, so I don't see it as a lost cause. Most of the people that took advantage of the sale found it from people sharing the post as required by the rules, so apparently something did well. In the two weeks that I ran this promotion, I found that my Facebook page got more likes, my Instagram got more followers, but who cares about that? The real benefit and reason is money. I was expecting one or two people to pay me nothing, but that didn't happen. Uh, quite the opposite. Every single person paid me something. The lowest someone paid me was $45, while the highest I was paid, including extra photos, ended up being almost 10 times that at 400 Most people did what they could, averaging a bit more than $100 per person, which isn't bad for an f- hour on set and an hour in post for the selected images. While this isn't buckets and buckets of cash, it's a decent chunk of change. When all is said and done, he calculated he earned 75 an hour on average. And when I count for time editing, time shooting, average amount the people were able to pay, it's totally fine wage. That's a totally fine pay- wage. 
I have decided to continue this promotion moving forward with a few changes. The new ads promote the pay what you can services featuring images from the promotion. Oh. First of all, headshots will take very little time and creative energy. And thanks to the Peter Hurley perfecting the headshot tutorial, my skills have improved a lot. Due to the lack of creative energy it takes, instead of one or two a day, I am setting aside Sundays as headshot days, pumping them through up to eight in a day and using the same lighting setup. Now, if I was solely doing headshots for my entire life, I think I might lose my mind. So I'm also continuing with more creative portraits on Wednesdays and Fridays. There's no real reason for these days other than the fact that it just felt right. I have limited the number of slots on these days to just two, as more creative portraits take up a lot of creative energy and take more time to set up. And so I don't want to burn out. By restricting the times and dates I'm available, it means that if someone is in a rush and the slots are full, they can pay the full rate and it also allows me to move forward with my normal freelancing gigs for companies and agencies. I've also had more than one person find out about this promotion and approach me for things that were outside of the scope, offering to pay for commercial use. I've also gotten lots of eyeballs on my work and it's helped with new connections within the advertising industry. Very, very interesting. Yeah, that's a cool idea. Uh, and you know what? I might actually have a, uh, uh, a, a a group in mind that I could share this with. Uh, let me just catch up here. Um, John, uh, you, you especially like, you especially like they have to spread the promotion if they want to use the service. Yes, that is, that is, that's a great point. Um, changing screens here, chat on the right. Yeah, so I have, let's do it this way. Make the chat come up. Oh, come on. You're killing me. Full screen, chat on right. There, it worked that time. I actually have, I have a newsletter that I've had for, since 1998 when I started. And it's grown quite large. It's not as large as it's always been. But it's a whole different niche than my target clients right now. And the work that I'm doing. And the prices that I'm cha uh, charging. So I've, I've been very hesitant to run ads to this large newsletter uh, offering web design stuff because I don't uh, I don't think there's really many there that uh, would pay uh, what uh, I'm currently doing work on other things but also uh, and so by doing that I don't want to just um, I don't want to get people unsubscribing because they think I'm trying to get money it's just one of those tricky niches but this could work out very well if I advertise I'm having a pay as you pay whatever you want. I like that he said what the value of that was, but to offer a four page website and a basic template and da -da 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 -da, such and such and such and such and such, uh, pay whatever they want, that could, uh, that could uh, work out really well because then people, they, well, not only, all right, so, you have some money coming in probably, but like you said, John, that whole point about promoting the um, uh, people having to share to promote it to others, that's, that's really cool. Wow. That is very cool. My mind is spinning because that would also, that would also bring along some work now this guy's a photographer, so obviously he's not going to have someone else just take the pictures. He's trying to be creative himself. But if you have a basic, uh, basic website that you're offering to people, uh, you could train someone or hire someone to uh, to learn how to do that. And especially as we're piggybacking on another uh, what we're talking about earlier, you could maybe hire someone who, even though okay, so you wouldn't be making enough money to pay going rates to hire someone. Uh, maybe in your community, but you could find someone or connect with someone who would be more than happy to do that work. And so in that way, as an example, you're not taking advantage of them because you don't have enough money to pay someone um, what it's worth in, in a different context, but you're helping someone who's grateful for the work, they're learning skills, and, um, and who knows what might grow from there. Yeah, that is that is cool, John. Thank you for sharing that. I like that. <laughs> so Tim starts his own website sweatshop. Listen, uh, yeah, that's why I said it so plainly before. Um, I do not want to take advantage of brown people. 
Um, there, yeah, so I do not want to start a sweatshop. Yeah, I don't want to, uh, so, you know, I don't want to just, yeah, I don't want to do that. But, uh, uh, you, you remember years ago when that uh, building collapsed in Bangladesh and it was uh, people that were making clothing for us? And I forget how many were killed. It was terrible. And the pictures that came out of that were terrible. And a lot of people said, no, 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 we shouldn't be making clothes there. And we're just taking advantage of those people. And uh, the people in Bangladesh want those jobs. They are good jobs for them. All they want is buildings that aren't going to collapse on them while they're working. And there are terrible circumstances there uh, and terrible working uh, conditions. Um, but if, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's complex. But yeah, I don't want, yeah, no, just say no to sweatshops. Um, if you can, if you know someone that's excited to put the, to install a base website for $50 that you've set up for them and they're thrilled by that and that's good money for them and that's what you can afford to pay them on a promotion like this, then, uh, then if the person's being lifted up, great. If a person is being held down, then, um, then that's, that's wrong. And again, I, we need to have a we need to have an objective standard that we hold ourselves to in order to treat others. So, uh, okay. Um, Valerie says she's breaking her own rule and passing along this link. If interested in what I'm getting at, it's your opinion, of course. You can watch. Uh, Vinny says only white people, which is a post by itself just alarming and so on all right let's uh i'm gonna open that video but i'm gonna very quickly pause it okay because i uh, if this music is copyrighted i get it just creates the whole editing uh chris do ceo of the future and blind is showing uh, my how to sell consultancy to clients by uncovering their desired future state and understanding its value so I can raise my prices and charge more money. <laughs> Find out what the people want and charge based on it. Okay. Uh, let me just read up uh, your... Uh, I just want to read back a couple of comments here. Yes. Oh, I only want to take advantage of white people. I don't want to take advantage of any people. Um. <laughs> ah, your post made sense. I, I knew that you weren't saying only white people, but that does make sense. Yeah. Um. Wow. Well, listen, uh, that's not the account I want to be logged into. But anyway, it's okay. Let's see. Um. Let's just let this play out here, this ad. Skip that. All right, let's see here. Founder and CEO of the future and blind. And this was one of the most mind-blowing conversations I had in a Work hard and be nice to and people. And I want to share that conversation with you. This video is longer than my usual videos, but it is so jam-packed with value. Chris is actually teaching me how to double my business by selling high-value consultancy. And it's just, and he's busting through so many minutes. Okay. All right. So, um, we won't watch that. It's 47 minutes long, but, uh, uh, Thank you, Valerie, for sharing that. I'm going to listen to that later on. Yes, uh, it is long. I'll give it a listen later on. Uh, yeah, yeah, work hard and be nice to people. That's a nice uh, logo. Um, could also be be nice to people and work hard. Mm, that changes it as well. So I don't want to be all pie in the sky or altruistic or... Um, everybody's on a, a different range of things. Uh, I, I know that a while ago I used to um, I used to hear what people were being quoted for projects and I'd say oh oh I can do it you know that's too much I can do it for less but uh, I was I was also not full time so when you have a job and you're starting out with a with an okay paycheck every month 
and then what you're doing is extra, then uh, yeah, you can do that. You can uh, you can charge less. But I also probably was over invested in my own emotional takeaway from helping people and enjoying doing that. And so, um, and that's great for organizations and different groups and stuff like that. But like I've said before, if someone's going into business to make money for themselves, where is the sense in, uh, in donating your own time and your own business energy into helping someone else uh, succeed if you're not going to benefit from it? And I, you know, I'm not one to say don't help people if there's nothing in it for you, but uh, we have to be wise in business. And uh, because I don't know if you, if you begin to notice that there's not a lot of people lining up to do free stuff to help build your business, then you might, uh, your perspective might be a little bit out of whack. Uh, Ivor says he's happy that he's retired and don't have to chase more customers anymore. Good for you, Ivor. You're just chasing the customers that you have. Hey, real interesting uh, conversation. We can keep talking about this. Uh, so we have had an alarm system at my house for, I don't know, 14, 15 years. And uh, it's a local company. And they have, uh, all those years, they have never tried to tell us that, hey, we can have a we can have a video camera at the front of our house or we can have an app that will monitor things. It's just been, we have the same security system we had 15 years ago. So a uh, different company, same company I have internet access with has an alarm system. So, and they offer the doorbell camera and it's cheaper than what I'm paying right now. So um, anyways, uh, the battery for my alarm system was, my current alarm system was low and the company called and I said, yeah, that's okay. We'll just ignore that because I'm going to change. I'm changing over to this other company anyways. Oh, can we have our cut our client care talk to you? Uh, can we put you through to customer care? And I said, no, 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 we're just switching. So I get a call from customer care the next day and, and the woman says, oh, I just want to make sure that you understand the contract terms of this other company. Oh, sure. Go ahead and explain it to me. So she starts telling me how the world's going to end uh, if I sign up with this company. And so I said to them, I said, you know, uh, oh, she said, uh, we can offer you, uh, we can offer you the same package that they have. We have cameras and we have the app and we, I can give you a special price and it'll, it'll match what they're, what they are. And I said, you know, part of my problem with your company is that, um, oh, no, actually she said, and if you're at the, if you're at, if you're at the outside of the, your, the term agreement of, uh, with us, you qualify for an upgrade. And I see that you do qualify, that your term is up. And I said, yes, I've had this like for 15 years. What's it been up like 10 years? Oh, yes, it has been a long time. I said, look, here's here's the problem I have with your company. You never call me. Uh, you've never told me about anything new. And, um, and she said this. She says, our company likes to focus on security. We don't make outgoing sales calls to our clients. And I said, well, that doesn't make sense because if your company is focused on security, are you telling me that even in the last 10 years, there's not some new development in security that would be good for my house or for my home? She says, oh, well, I see what you mean. But, you know, we're, we're a fourth generation family company. Uh, the, the fourth generation is running it now. And I said, well, how old is that generation? How old are they? And she says, oh, I'm going to I'm going to take your uh, comments to our management team. And I said, has no one else ever brought this up to you before? Oh, yes. Two or three people did before. I said, and so why is it that my me making them, you're going to take them to your management team? And I explained to her, I said, look, I'm not trying to roast you. I said, but I'm just telling you my impression, the impression of your of your company. Um, and, uh, you know, I really, I almost wanted to say to her, look, you should probably, if you get a chance to move to a new job, you should probably get out of this company because if that's their model, they're not going to be around for a long time. And the reason that I think of this is that that's probably a company that um, would be more than happy for me to work cheap for them, to work on something for them. And I could say, oh, they're such a great company being around a long time, they're family owned, I'm going to, yeah, I, I'm going to donate, I'm going to put some of my energy into helping them. Uh, that's a company maybe it's not going to be around for very long 
Um, and so we have to be, we have to, you know, with our business and also with our lives, we only have so much time and we have to be wise about where we're investing it. So it makes, it accomplishes the most to help out our family and to help out people that need help in the world. So, uh, yes, Vinny guess, you know, it works great. Uh, the alarm system has worked great for 15 years. Other than changing batteries, there has been no problem. And the battery is just to keep it, uh, keep it going when, um, when there's no power. So, yeah, Vinny, uh, listen, Vinny, uh, when you come out here and break into my house, afterwards, you and I'll go get a haircut together. I, j I just got a haircut last week, as you can see. Um... Hey, something else I'd like to share with you guys is this. Let me just bring up the. Uh, I hope I. Oh, uh, will I try this? Yes, I'm going to try this. It's because I live in Canada. Even the burglars are nice. Oh, yes. Uh, which package did I get with Telus? I will look at that with you right now uh that, oh i keep i have this little christmas tree remote that i use for turning lights on and off here whoops all my studio lights at christmas i actually use it on the tree but i keep uh i still don't have my phone working for the remote for streamlabs obs um and so uh I keep going to change screens by looking at this so if the light goes out and i'm changing screens that's what it is let me share this uh, so I'm going to change this here. Uh, this, in this white, remember I was showing you about the different logo and different things that I was doing uh, for for this YouTube channel I'm starting? I was working on the channel for the, um, uh, looking for the, uh, the trailer for the channel, working on that. And here's what I've got. I'm happy to share it with you. Hello and welcome to The Han on Fire, brought to you by Firewise Learning Academy. I'm Tim Davis, the voice of Firewise Learning Academy, and your host. The Han on Fire is a podcast and YouTube channel featuring education, commentary, and conversation with Dr. John DeHaan and some of his colleagues and friends. Dr. DeHaan is an internationally recognized... Anyways, and it goes from there, but I'm super excited about how that whole uh, opening went, uh, is going, uh, uh, how it looks, yeah. Uh, so I, that I finished that trailer this afternoon, uh, a channel trailer, and I will put it up uh, today. And then I have already have three sessions recorded with Dr. Dahan, two of which I'm going to publish this week. And the channel will be launched, and then we'll do. It's gonna. I'll uh, get grab the audio and set up the podcast. And uh, oh, did you get a lot of echo there? All right, let's give her one more try. I'm going to turn my mic off for this. Hello and welcome to The Han on Fire, brought to you by Firewise Learning Academy. I'm Tim Davis, the voice of Firewise Learning Academy, and your host. All righty, and... Yes, well, thank you, Valerie. Appreciate that comment. All right, that's uh, Valerie. You were wondering about uh, you got Rogers or Bell. Uh, if, let's see here, and you were in Toronto, so um, uh, Internet Fiber Optic, Toronto, Ontario. Oh. Enter. Correct that there. Now, obviously, they're bringing up Telus because I am here. All right. So here's what I, I'll show you. What I've got the packages here. Telus. Uh, internet. There we go. Uh, da, 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 da. 
This is what I have at home. I think that's what you asked. So I have this Pure Fiber 300 300. And that is the $100 per month for on a 24 month contract and then $110 per month. And it includes 300 M, uh, megabits per second download and upload and unlimited, unlimited monthly data. So that's the one that I've got there for 100 a month. Now you're wondering, like 150 was great. 150, uh, duh, 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 duh. let's see. Yeah, this one here, Pure Fiber, 150, 150. Um, 150 is great. That's what I've been streaming on and doing all of my stuff on uh, for the last, maybe it's a year, almost two years that I've had fiber. So if you've been watching this channel, you know that it's no problem. Um, that is no problem. Now, what they offered me was, uh, was to move up to 300, 300 for the same price that I was paying. Um, which was, I think, 105 or something like that. I, I don't know. But, uh, so 150 is super fast if that's what you're getting. And even here, TELUS gives you the extra 10%. So I was actually getting one, uh, 170. So that's more than 10%. On the 300, I'm getting 330. So they, it's, it is, uh, yeah. So 150 is super, super good. Uh, really though, for my price here, for an extra fifteen dollars per month, three hundred, that's that's fine. I mean, I would like to go the extra just for the gigabit, but um, two hundred and forty-one a month. Wow! So uh, your promotional discount. What is it, the Valerie? What is it with the discount? You, so you have a three-year contract. What is it each month for three years? Because quite possibly it might still be a good deal because down the road you can always change it. There's probably going to be something cheaper. Now also uh, what, what TELUS offers here is no term. So I could get 300 for a hundred, a 300 up and down for 110 but limited to one terabyte monthly. And then I was all, and then on this plan here, it was one terabyte monthly as well. Oh, I thought it was <clears throat> 500. But, <clears throat> so you, the difference is unlimited and it's $10 cheaper, but. So, yeah, but yeah, that's, that's crazy, 240. Yeah, that's nuts. Oh, okay, and trying and you're trying to cite a business phone is bundled in that. So 100 105 ish. Yep. So I really like the I really like the fiber. It is really great. I really like the unlimited data. The other day, well, last night I downloaded something that's 500 megabytes, and um, the, an update to my video editing software. And then um, for some reason it done didn't update properly, so I started again the process and it wanted to download it all over again and that was another 500 uh, giga uh, 500 megabytes so it's like ah, no problem I've, I've got unlimited so I just don't even have to think about that now yeah so let me here I should uh, you probably looked at those plans there but I'll just put the link there so you don't have to oh you know here's there's something goofy that's going on here too um Somehow I ended up in on my personal account here, so I can't even uh, can't even add in the chat a link because it thinks it's me. So let me just switch to uh, chat on the right. Uh, I'm going to switch to basic Joomla tutorials. Hey, hey I just created a. Just created a there we go, and I'm going to go paste that. There we go. Do, do, do. Yeah, I'm not sure how I ended up that, but uh, hey, look at that. 1,454 subscribers. We have a new subscriber. I also just saw something really cool, um, and I set this up on uh, my client's new channel. There's a way. Let me change the screen here. Da, da, da. There is a way so that when other people, if you're live and other people are watching your videos, it will alert them to the fact that you are live.
So, huh, I should set that up on my channel. All right, also, uh, I will uh, show and tell. My wife and I had our 33rd anniversary last, it's on the 23rd, which I think maybe was Thursday. Or was it Friday? I don't know. I remembered it, though. I just don't remember which day that was. Looking at the calendar, on Friday. And so to celebrate, we went out, I went out, and got Fitbits. So uh, we have found out some very interesting things. So for instance, my resting heart rate uh, when I'm sitting down is like 80 in the 80s. Uh, sometimes it's like 90. And I guess normal is uh, 60 through 100. But my wife's resting heart rate is 60. So um, now my resting heart rate is actually in the fat burning zone. So I've been telling everyone, even when I'm sitting, I'm exercising. Um, but I, I just thought of that because I looked down to see what time it was and uh, remembered that I have this. So I went for a walk yesterday, hatched some Pokemon, hatched a Pokemon egg, and uh, I'm ahead of my wife for steps this month. So we're actually friends on Fitbit now, Fitbit.com, and I can actually, they actually have a button to taunt to your friends. So uh from physical security to digital security if you're bored all right let's see i've shared this threat cloud attacks today oh this is exciting here comes an attack from china oh wow this is uh learn about checkpoint threat prevention attacks today live cyber attack threat map Wow. This is cool. <laughs> Trojan. Wow, that's interesting. Ivor, that is cool. Who's attacking people in Vietnam? These are probably computers that are hacked that are taking over. Yeah, okay. I wonder how they how do they find this? How do they know this? The source. Man, this all right, so someone in uh someone in uh Vietnam is really getting hammered. Denial of service attack, huh? This is too cool. Uh, threat map. And okay, Ivor's got another cool link for us. Boing, 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 boing. Yeah, obviously it's, it's that's Vietnam over there, is it not? Wow, that's even uh, attacks and infections. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> These are both great sites to promote to people and say, hey, here's why you want me maintaining your site. Because you could become a dot. I like this channel so much. I like this channel so much, I would subscribe to it if I wasn't doing it. <laughs> okay. Oh boy, another link. Oh, this is pretty. Mary says when she worked at a hosting company, looked at it a lot. It was amazing how much time is spent on DOS attacks. We had a whole department of people devoted to it. I uh, host uh, my service with OVH, uh, OVH and I get free denial of service attack stuff. And uh, I think twice in the last 12 months, I've got an email saying, hey, uh, there was a, a denial of service attack on your domain and uh, we've moved it to our system and we're cleaning it. And then, I don't know, after a little while, then it ends and they switch it back. So cool, cool, cool. Wow. 
Now this is a different format. This is just dot showing. So what do you got? Green is Salady, botnets, mobile, conficker, zero access. We'll need to do a little bit more interp interruptation here. Because this is not as clear as who's doing and who's not doing. Threat map. What is this? That's clear. Uh, this real-time app shows actual data from our threat intelligence feeds, including the Looking Glass delivers the most comprehensive threat intelligence-driven solutions. The market enabling security teams to efficiently and effectively address threats through the cyber threat lifecycle with a scalable solutions portfolio of threat. Da, 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 da. So it's not really a key here. Oh, look at this. Ivor is on a roll. Global DDoS attacks, denial of service. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wow. Who would have thought that China was attacking the United States in a cyber way? Notable recent attacks. Wow. This is crazy. An attack on, the, on I wonder who it was against. Got historical data here. Okay. Yeah, exactly, Vinny. That's China is attacking you. Although it looks like uh, Australia was attacking as well. And the United States attacking Russia. Very interesting. <clears throat> Right. Do do do. <laughs> Many hates it when DOS attacks Windows. An old people joke. The internet and computers have been around long enough now that old people can joke about them and young people don't get them. All right. Well, I grabbed a couple of pieces of cheese for breakfast, so I should probably wrap things up here and go and uh, get on with putting some food in me so I don't get super tired. Although I did not sleep well last night. According to my Fitbit, not only according to my Fitbit, but also according to my Timbit. If you're in Canada, you get that joke. Um... Yeah, the chat come up? There it is. Yes, uh, Tim Bits. Or, uh, if you go to Tim Hortons in Canada, you can get donuts. It's a national institution. It's a cultural, it's a cultural place to be, and uh, you can get Tim Bits, which are basically I think other places are called donut holes. But anyways, Tim Bits. So the Fitbit and Tim Bit knows that uh, there was not a lot of sleep happening last night. Well, everybody, thanks for uh, spending time with me today. That was really nice. Thanks for all these links that you have shared and ideas and discussion. And uh, thanks again to uh, Laura for the idea for today's Maintenance Monday. And uh, yeah. So uh, Valerie says her Fitbit died and you didn't shed a single tear. Uh, Vinny says they're called munchkins at donut at, at Dunkin' Donuts. Ah, uh, and Mary says that joke is worth hanging around for. Well, great. If you watch, uh, if you watch uh, how ridiculous the YouTube channel, they have the Forty Four Club, which are people that walk right, watch right to the end. Oh, there's a link. Ivers pasted one more. Let me just quickly go to that. Microsoft furnace lit. Okay, I'm probably not going to show that one because uh, I don't want to get a copyright strike for using other people's content. But check that out. It looks like it's good. It's a spoof on Microsoft versus Linux. Great. 
and my chat is not showing. Everybody, thanks for your support of this channel. Uh, thanks for making, uh, thanks for being a, a, a great big bonus and happy addition to my life. Uh, for your support of this channel, your contribution to it, and uh, everything that I learned from it. So uh, until Wednesday when we'll be taking a look at why I like JCE Editor better than Tiny MCE. And uh, you can have your stuff on tap as well for that. Uh, enjoy your Joomla sites and God bless.